Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. My co-host, Mr. Brody, is here. It's been a little while since we've played a game here. Um, we had Mr. Miller staying with us for a little while. And uh, he is actually headed off down to Georgia um, to see family down there. Not sure how long he's going to be. Um, but he'll be there for a, probably a little while, probably at least a few weeks to maybe a month or so. Um until it gets a little warmer up here. Uh, we do expect them back at some point, but we're not sure exactly when. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so we haven't really been recording a lot, uh, sporadically here and there, just to keep the channel going, but um, probably get a little bit more regular of a schedule now, now that we're, we're back uh, in a regular routine here. Mr. Brody is in his co-host seat here with Purple Dinosaur, and... Uh, Let's get this game underway. So this is game number 121 of the 1978 Red Sox season using Stratomatic Baseball. Um, Red Sox are currently have a record of 71 and 49. Uh, they're currently two games out of first place. They're in second place. Uh, the Yankees and the Milwaukee Brewers are tied at 73 and 47, two games ahead of the Red Sox, and the Yankees are in first place because they have the tiebreaker, I guess the head-to-head -head matchup uh, with the Brewers there. They lead that. Um, so anyway, so the Red Sox two games out. They just they lost uh, last night's game against the Angels. They won two out of three against the Angels, and they're starting a three-game series against the Oakland um, Athletics in Oakland. So, without further ado, let's get this game underway. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. So Steve Rinko is on the mound for the Oakland Athletics. He would later become a member of the Boston Red Sox, I believe, in the 80s. And he'll be going up against... I did not even check to see who the Red Sox had pitching. Uh, Mike Torres, that's right, Mike Torres. Will be on the mound for the Red Sox, the ex-Oakland A. So the Red Sox line up against Rinko. Well, let's look at Rinko record here. Record Rinko comes in at six and ten. He would finish six and twelve on the actual season. Six and ten uh ERA of five point four four. So basically a little a run and run in a fifth over his actual ERA for the season. So he's not faring as well in the replay. With hundred and twenty seven innings pitched, hundred and twenty seven hits allowed, so right on track for that. He's pretty much even for the whole season. 57 walks and 73 strikeouts and has surrendered a whopping 16 home runs. He actually only surrendered 10 on the actual season uh, in 151 innings. And has already surrendered 16 in just 127 innings. So the Red Sox lineup behind... Uh, Facing Rinko will be Rick Burleson, the shortstop, will bat first. Jerry Remy is at second base, batting next. The left fielder, Jim Rice, hits third. Hitting cleanup is Colin Fisk. So, Kali Stremski out of the, out of the, 
lineup again today. So he, he did play in yesterday's game. Gary Hancock is again in, in at center field for Freddie Lynn. As he was, I believe, in yesterday's game too. I think Hancock started in center. Jack Broham with the DH will hit sixth. Batting seventh is the right fielder, Dwight Evans. George Scott is the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Butch Hobson, the third baseman, will hit ninth. So the defense behind Renko, not very good. Uh, Page, DeLone, and Ashton, all below average range. Austin, the most error prone in right field, with a rating of 16. And all actually, Page and Alston, both with below average arms, especially Page and left. The lone in center has an average arm. In the infield, it's Gross, Guerrero, Edwards, and Reverend, all below average range except for Edwards, who's average. And Guerrero and Edwards will commit quite a few errors at shortstop and second. Oh, especially Gross at third. It's got Butch Hobson-like numbers almost. Not quite as high as the error rating, but pretty close at a 41. And Revering, the most sure-handed of the four in the infield, although not very sure-handed, though. <laughs> Ever the rating of 15. Behind the plate, Jim Essien is the best defender on the team with a below a above average range, neutral arm, and will commit just a few errors, but not that many. So Rick Burleson steps into the box. He comes in hitting 269 on the season with a homer and 37 runs batted in. So Rinko looks in for the sign from Messi, and here's the windup in the pitch. And it's going to be off the three column. So it'll be a line out to first. Rubbering has it for out number one. Next up, Jerry Remy. Remy hitting, again hitting, still hitting an even 300 with two homers and 35 runs batted in. Yeah, it's going to be off this four column of Rinko. And strike three looking. So Rinko gets his first K of the day. So two up and two down for the Red Sox in the first. Brings up Jim Rice hitting 311 with 35 homers and 102 runs batted in. And it's going to be off the five column. And he'll strike out swing. So Rinko gets two Ks in the first, and after one half, it's Boston nothing and Oakland coming up. So Mike Torres on the hill. Mike Torres having a fine season with a 14 and 4 record. 3.07 earned run average. 182 innings pitch, 174 hits allowed. So he's fared much better with a with only allowing 174 hits, eight, eight less than the innings pitched, where he was 22 over for the entire season. So that's part of the reason why he's got such a good record of 14 and 4. He's walked 62 and struck out 91 and has surrendered 15 homers. So the lineup for the hometown Oakland Athletics is going to be Miguel DeLone will hit first and play center. Del Aston is the right fielder hitting second. Mitchell Page, the left fielder, will hit third. Batting cleanup is the DH Rico Cardi. Batting fifth is Dave Revering, the first baseman. Mario Guerrero is the shortstop hitting sixth. Third baseman Wayne Gross will hit seventh. Behind the plate, Jim Essien hits eighth. And the second baseman, Mike Edwards, will hit ninth. So DeLone comes in hitting 307. I'm oh, sorry, uh, not 307. 217 with no homers and 18 runs batted in. So he's already got more RBIs than he did for the entire season. So the defense behind Torres is going to be Rice, Hancock, and Evans. Rice and Hancock average range. Evans excellent range in left. And Evans has a cannon for an arm in right. Hancock slightly below above average arm in center. And Rice average arm in left. Rice the most shorthanded of the three. With Hancock the, the most error prone with a 13 rating in center. The infield is 
Hobson, Burleson, Remy, and Scott left to right. Hobson is an error machine and has below average range. Burleson, excellent range. We'll commit, a, we'll commit his fair share of errors at shortstop. Jerry Remy, above at, and Remy and Scott both above average range at second and first. Behind the plate is Carlton Fisk, excellent range, above average arm, and a very low error rating. And Torres on the mound has average range with a fairly low error range, error rating but is not good at all at holding runners on with a plus seven. So if runners get on, they will probably most likely try to steal against Torres. So the corn Hobson and Scott playing in against Stallone. Torres looks in for the sign from Fisk. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And Delone will get a good one to hit here. But he'll pop it up the short. Burleson's there and makes the catch for out number one. So I'll have to keep an eye on a couple of games here. The Yankees are at Seattle. And the uh, Detroit Tigers are visiting the Milwaukee Brewers. So, and we have a score here in Detroit. It's Detroit one to nothing. Not sure exactly what inning that is. The Yankees and Seattle are scoreless. So Dell Alston up now, the right fielder. He comes in hitting just 195 with a homer and seven runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Torres. It's off of his five column, and that is going to be a little fly out to Evans in right for out number two. So Mitchell Page up now. He comes in hitting 297 with 14 homers and 62 runs batted in. And it's going to be off the three column. And it's going to be strike three looking. So after one inning, no score. Fisk will lead it off for the Red Sox here in the second. Fisk comes in hitting 306 with 15 homers and 65 runs batted in. Uh, Franco's five call. And that's a fly ball at the center. Delone's there and makes the catch for out number one. So that'll bring up Gary Hancock with one down. He's hitting 273 with two runs batted in and 33 at bats. And he's going to get a good one to hit here. And he's going to get a base hit to right. Alston scoops it up and fires it in the second. So Hancock with his first hit of the day. First, red, first hit for either team. So Jack Broham with the DH up now. Proherman hitting 248 in the season with 16 runs batted in. And do we want to go with a hit and run? I, let's check Brohammer. I don't think he's that good at that. Oh, he's actually pretty good at hit and run and B. Let's go with a hit. He's only hitting 248, so let's go with a hit and run here. Which one is the hit? Oh, this one right here. No, oh, that's not it. Uh, that one. No, right here. Hit and run. There we go. All right, let's go with a hit and run here. Chance for a hit, 25. Chance will miss the pitch, 22. Is Hancock. It's Hancock. He's not a bad speed. All right, let's go for it. Actually, what's a stolen base, though? It's not good, I'm sure. E. Yeah, we'll go with a hit and run. Why not? And, whoops, what are we doing here? Uh, so the hit and run has hit the Edwards. So Hancock will move up. Otherwise, that could have been two. So a run in scoring position with two down for Evans. Evans hitting 250 with 19 homers and 67 runs batted in. It's going to be off the four column. And that'll be a fly ball to center. DeLone has it. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. So they cannot get the runner in scoring position home. So after one and a half, it's still no score. And Rico Cardi with a Blue Jay uniform here. I think he would be traded to the Blue Jays later in the year. So 
So Cardi comes in as the DH today. Cardi hitting 306 on the season with 31 homers and 90 runs batted in. Yeah, I think he would be. Um, maybe he was traded from the Blue Jays to the A's because I think the A's were actually pretty good during the season here. Um, they had a pretty good season. Not faring that well in the replay. Actually, no, they weren't really that good. 61 and 63. Huh. Uh, oh, geez. So, Cardi with a chance here to break his home run total of 31 for the season here. See what he can do. He just gets a base hit. So, Cardi's on with a single to lead off the second here for the Oakland Athletics. Revering up now. Let's see if Revering is a threat to steal. I mean, it's a bunt. Not really. Probably not. Or hit and run. All right. So Reverend comes in in 234 with 12 homers and 43 runs batted in. And Torres will strike him out for his second K of the day. So let's check out some s scores from around the league here. Cleveland edging Chicago 1-0. Detroit still leads Milwaukee 1-0. California leads Baltimore one nothing. Texas and Kansas City are scoreless. Toronto and Minnesota are also scoreless. And New York and Seattle are scoreless also. So that'll bring you Bramp Guerrero with a one down and runner on first. Guerrero hitting two fifty two with on the season with three homers and forty three runs batted in. He's already broken his RBI total for the season. And it's gonna be a hit and run. Dribble at a first. Scott will take it himself. Cardi moves into scoring position now with two down. So very similar to the Red Sox. We have a run in scoring position with two down. Wayne Gross up now, hitting just 185 with seven home, but with seven homers and 18 runs batted in. So he's got a little bit of pop. He's already equaled his home run total for the season. And it's going to be up to six column with Torres. And that one's hit a long way. That one's going to go... Hancock dives for it and misses it. And Gross will end up at second with a 2 out double. And that will score the run as Cardi comes in to make it Oakland 1-0. Jim Essien up now. Essien hitting 238 with four homers and 21 runs bat in. Only hit three homers on the actual season. Torres hoping to get out of it with just the one run against him. So a three column. And that's a ground ball to Remy at second. He fires over to Scott. And that'll do it. But the Oakland Athletics get on the board. On the RBI double for Wayne Gross. So the boomer George Scott up for the Red Sox here in the third. He 248 in the season with 11 homers and 38 runs batted in. He's going to have his one call. And it's a ground ball to Gross. Charges it. Fires the first. And gets him. So to bring up Butch Hobson. Third baseman hitting 271 on the season with 10 homers and 45 runs batted in. It's going to be a wrinkle six call. And Hobson will draw the one out walk. Hit and run C. No, we're not going to hit and run. All right, so that'll bring up Rick Burleson. He lined out his first time up. And, ooh, he goes, he's going to get a good one to hit here. Let's see what he can do with it. And Burleson's going to give this one a charge. That's going to be for extra bases. That'll get down. And are we going to send Hobson in on oh, no, 11? No. We're going to hold him at third. So Burleson ends up. With a double here. Hobson at third. So runners on second and third with the one down. See if Remy can deliver here. Struck out his first time up. Rico looks at the sign for Messian. Looks at the runners. Here's the windup in the pitch. And Remy will get a good one to hit here. And he lays off of it and draws the walk. So the base is loaded now for Jim Rice. Just what you want to see if you're a Red Sox fan. So 
So Essien goes out to Tatarinko, make sure they're on the same page. Goes back behind the plate. Essien flashes the sign. Rinko nods his head, looks up the runners. Here's the windup in the pitch to Rice. He struck out his first time up. And he'll strike out again. So Rice cannot deliver with the bases loaded. So two down now for Fisk. Fisk flew out his first time up. Come on, three column. Ooh, that's not too bad. Come on. High high rolls. Come on, high split. And Fisk will draw the bases loaded walk just outside. And the Red Sox tie it up on the bases loaded walk to Fisk. So Hancock with a chance to put the Red Sox ahead. Singled his first time up. Come on, one call. Oh, and it is. Come on, baby. Oh, and he gets the skinny single there. One run comes in. We're going to send home Remy. Two runs come in. Oh, I'm going to hold the trailing runners. So Hancock delivers once again and gets a two-run single to put the Red Sox ahead 3-1. to one. So I believe Hancock had two hits in the last game. I mean, uh, let's check here. Very curious. Let's see what he's done. No, he had one hit in last game. One for four. And now two for four in back-to-back -back starts. So Hancock delivers. You didn't get RBIs? You got a, it should have been RBIs on that one. That's weird. I think they should have put these as RBIs and not run batted and not run scored. Interesting. So alright, yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be an error there. So runners on first and second with two down for Jack Brohammer. Brohammer grounded out his first time up. Here's the pitch by Rinko. And ooh, and he could keep the inning going here. But he does not as he grounds out to Edwards. Fires over to Reverend, and that'll do it. The Red Sox score three and lead it three to one after two and a half. So the Yankees have scored against Seattle. One nothing New York. So number nine hitter Edwards up now against Torres here in the home half of the third. Torres with a two run lead now. Edwards comes in hitting 285 with a homer and 24 runs batted in. And he'll ground one to Hobson. He was playing in. Fires over to Scott for out number one. Delone up now. Popped out his first time up. And he'll fly out to Evans in right. Circles under and makes the catch. So two up and two down in the Oakland third. For Alston, who flew out his first time up. And he'll draw the two out walk. First walk given up by Torres today. So run on first with two down for Mitchell Page. Strikeout victim his first time up. It's going to be off the sixth column of Torres. And he'll get a hold of one here. That one's going to go all the way to the wall. That's going to be for extra bases. Hmm. 75% chance. I think we want to try to stop the other runners from being. So we get a two run lead here. So throw is cut off, allows the run to score. So it's 3 2 now on the RBI double by Page. Rico Cardi up now. Singled and came around the score. The first Oakland run last inning. And it's going to be up to five column. And that's going to be a fly ball to left. Rice is there and makes the catch. But Oakland gets one back, and it's three to two Boston after three. Alrighty, we're back. I didn't realize we just realized we tripped the breaker as Mr. Brody was in the dark there. But he's back now. We're back. After some 
lighting issues in the st- in Oakland County Coliseum here. We're back. All right. So let's see here. So top of the fourth, Red Sox will have bottom third of the order. Evan Scott and Hobson up against Renko. Evans flew out his first time up. And Evans will get a good one to hit here. Oh, and Evans gives this one a long one. Mitchell Page back to the wall. And he makes the catch on the warning track. So not quite enough for Evans. So let's check out scores again. Chicago edging Cleveland 1-0. I mean, 3-2. Uh, to two. Sorry. 2-1. Two to one. Detroit leads Milwaukee still 1-0. California ahead of Baltimore now 4 to 1. Texas leads Kansas City 1 0. Minnesota leads Toronto 1 0. Yankees on top of Seattle now 4 to 2. And here in Oakland, it's Boston on top 3 to 2. So the boomer up now. He grounded out his first time up. And swing and a miss. Strike three. So. Scott goes down on strikes. Rinko's fourth K of the day. Hobson up now. He walked his first time up. And it looks like he'll get a good one to hit here. And he's going to hit this one over the head. It's going to rattle around. And he's going to end up at third with a triple. Could it be an inside the park home run? With two down. Oh, what the heck? We might as well try. <laughs> Hobson's going to try to score all the way f- and get it inside the park home run. Let's try it. We don't get this that often. And he'll be in there with an inside the park home run. He gets the split there. He had a 35% chance to get it, and he does with a five on the split. So Hobson gets himself an inside the park home run. You don't see that too often, especially from Butch Hobson. He was a little low on his homer total, so I figured we'd give him a shot to get a home run. The old-fashioned way. So Hobson returns to the dugout out of breath. As he was motoring around those bases. So the Red Sox increased the lead now 4-2. to two. So Rick Burleson up now. He's one for two. Doubled his last time up. And he's going to fly out to Page. Just missed that single. As Page makes a good catch on that one. So that'll do it for the Red Sox in the fourth. But they do tack on another lead at four to two. So Oakland will send up Reverend Guerrero and Gross against Torres in the fourth. Reverend strikeout victim his first time up. And this time he draws the walk. So Mario Guerrero grounded out his first at bat. And oh, it's going to be a wild pitch on Torres. So Reverend moving the scoring position. So here's the pitch to Guerrero. And that's going to be a pop-up to Remy. He'll make the catch for out number one. Reverend holds at second. Wayne Gross up now. Had an RBI double his first time up. Get a good one to hit here. And he's going to hit this one to right center field. That's going to go to the wall. And Gross is going to end up at third. With an RBI triple. So tying run just 90 feet away. Infield will play in. Trying to cut off the run at home and keep the Red Sox lead. Jim Essie in the slow footed catcher up now. Grounded out his first time up. So here's the pitch. Oh. And Essien's going to give this one a drive. So that will tie the game as Gross easily trots in. So an RBI double for Essie and ties the score at four. So Fisk goes out to talk to Torres, try to settle him down there. 
Still only one down. Oh, and Edwards has got an opportunity here to put the A's in the lead. But he does not as he hits it to Burleson who fires over to Scott for out number two. As Essien holds at second. The loan up now. 0 for 2 on the day. And he'll line one to Hobson for out number 3. But Oakland scores 2 and ties the game at 4. So the Red Sox need to win today. In order to remain. Actually, if their scores hold up, they'll remain 2 games behind the Yankees. And Milwaukee will fall to a game behind in second place. So Remy up now. Remy will lead it off for the Red Sox here in the fifth. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. And he'll ground on the Reverend. Races the first and beats Remy for the out. Rice up now. He struck out twice against Renko. Make that three times. So Rice having a bad day today against Renko. Can't figure him out and strikes out for a third time. Carlton Fisk had a bases loaded walk back in the third. He's also flown out. And this time he'll ground out to Guerrero to end the inning. So the Red Sox go 1-2-3 in the fifth. And halfway through, we're tied at four. So Torres with 79 pitches through four innings. So he's labored through the first four. Hasn't had his best stuff. So Hobson and Scott will play in against Alston. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. And he pops one up. Remy has it and makes the catch for the first out of the fifth. Mitchell Page out now. Up now. Had an RBI double in the third. And he'll get a good one to hit here. He laces a base hit past Scott. So Page is a threat to steal. Scott will hold him on. Cardi, one for two. Page is taking a lead. He's off with the pitch. And we're going to hold on to it. Wow, 90% chance. We don't want to make that error 8% chance at an error. So Page in scoring position with a one down for Cardi. And he lines on the Burleson. Page quickly dives back to second. So two down now. Reverend with a chance to put the A's ahead. It's 0 for 1 with a walk. And he lines on to Remy. He'll make the catch to retire the side. So after 5 full, we're still tied at 4. 4 runs, 4 hits, and no errors for the Red Sox. And 4 runs, 6 hits, and no errors for the Athletics. I bring up Gary Hancock. He's having a good day so far. He's two for two with two runs batted in. And he'll get another opportunity. Can he get his third hit of the day? And he can. So Gary Hancock with a three for three performance so far. Making the most of his start today. And we have Jack Brohammer is 0 for 2. And we're going to go with the hit and run again. See if we can execute it this time. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Wrong one. Yeah, that's good. Only 17% chance to miss and 27% chance to hit it. So see if they can execute here. And does the same thing as he did last time. So Hancock moves in the scoring position with one down. So it works the same as a sacrifice. So Evans has flown out twice. Can Evans put the Red Sox ahead? 
And he hits one to Guerrero. Fires over to Reverend. As Hancock has to hold at second. So Evans unable to get the clutch single. Now let's check out the scores once again. Let's check out the scores between uh, Milwaukee and New York. So Detroit still leading Milwaukee two to nothing. And the Yankees have increased their lead now seven to three against Seattle. So George Scott with two down and the base is empty. I mean, I'm sorry, and uh, Hancock takes second. Can he get the job done? And he cannot as he strikes out for the second time today. So through five and a half, four, four. So this is likely to be Torres' last inning as he's up to 95 pitches. So Guerrero leads it off. Girl's 0 for 2 on the day. And that's a fly ball to left. Rice is there and makes the catch. So one down now for Wayne Gross. Gross has had a couple extra base hits today. A double an RBI triple in the sec a double in the second, and an RBI triple in the fourth. And it's time Torres gets him for the third strikeout of the day. So two up and two down for the Athletics. Jim Essien had an RBI double his last time up. One for two. And he'll line one the Hobson to end the inning. So Boston four, Oakland four after six full. Hobson had an RBI I mean, had an inside the park home run his last time up. Oh, one for one officially. Also walked. And this time he hits a fly ball, but Page has it lined up for out number one. So one gone in the Red Sox seventh. Burleson, one for three with a double. And Burleson will get a hold of this one here. And he'll end up at second for the second double of the day. So the go-ahead run in scoring position with one down for Jerry Remy. Remy 0 for 2 with a walk. And he'll get his second walk of the day. So it'll put runners on first and second for Jim Rice, who's struck out three times so far against Rinko. Oh, is he going to strike out four times? No, but he will fly out to the lone in center. Gets under, he got under it just a bit. So two down now. For Carlton Fisk. Fisk with a chance to put the Red Sox ahead. Already has one RBI today. And he hits one to the left, but Page is there. Down the innings, so the Red Sox cannot take advantage of having run in scoring position with one down. So here's the trivia question brought to you by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags. On the last day of 1983 pennant race, what Atlanta manager allowed one of his players, Bruce Benedict, to, to make all the strategy decisions? Was Bobby Cox the manager back then? I think he might have been. Or was he with the Blue Jays then? I don't know. I'm going to go with Bobby Cox. I know he had a couple of stints with the Braves. So we'll go with him. So lock in your answers. Here we go. Joe Torrey was the Braves manager. Ah. So Braves were eliminated from pennant race one game prior to Benedict's managerial inaugural. All right, I did not know that one. I forgot that yeah, Joe Torrey was the manager of the Braves in the 80s. So, all right, so thank you, Mr. Brody and Miss Mag, for that trivia question there. Mr. Brody seems bored with this game. He's, he's already snoozing away in the co-host seat. On a cold 
another cold April 9th night of night 2018. I think we're going to go directly from winter into summer, <laughs> probably sometime in June. So there's some Mike Edwards up now. He'll lead it off against Torres here in the bottom of the seventh. Torres up to 106 pitches. So we're going to give him one more inning anyway. Still vying for his 15th win of the season, so we'll give him another shot at that. Hopefully the Red Sox can score in the 8th to give him that. So Pate Edwards up now. He's 0 for 2. A couple of ground outs. And this time he'll fly out to left. Rice is there to make the catch. So DeLone up now. DeLone 0 for 3 on the day. Meet that 0 for 4 as he grounds it out to Remy. Score that a 4-3 for out number 2. So Del Olsen 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. And he gets his first hit of the day. Two out single. So brings up Mitchell Page. <clears throat> 2 for 3 with a RBI double. And he'll fly out to Evans and right. Reaches up and makes the catch. So after 7 full, 4-4. Four, four. See if the Red Sox can get a run here and get Torres a victory. Hancock, the best hitter for either team today. He's 3-3 three for three with 3 singles and 2 runs batted in. Can he make it 4-4? Four, four, four? Possibly. He will. Gary Hancock makes it four for four. Wow. I don't know if he ever did that in his career. So we're going to have Brohammer. Do we want to bunt or do we want to go with the hit and run here? We haven't fared too well in the hit and run. What is... I think he's an A bunter though. So let's see here. If he's an A bunter, I think we might... No, he's a B bunter. Let's go with the hit and run. I think it's 81% chance for... Do we want to bunt? He misses the pitch, though. Let's see what the... Let's see what our chances are here. Yeah, still 27% chance for a hit. And only a 17% chance for a miss. Whereas, there's a 19% chance... With a, with a B bunter to, I think, miss the bunt or uh, pop up the bunt or something bad. So I think we're going to go with the hit and run here. Let's try a hit and run. Maybe the third time will be a charm. Let's see. No, he hits it to Edwards once again. Wow, so three times Brohammer hits to Edwards on the hit and run, but he gets the job done as Hancock moves in the scoring position. So Evans, another chance here to Put the Red Sox ahead. 0 for 3 today. And that's going to be it for Renko. So it'll be Dave Heverlo coming on. So maybe that'll help. Heverlo comes in with a 7-1 record though. A 3.51 earn run average. 95 innings pitch. 97 hits allowed. 25 walks and 59 strikeouts. But has surrendered 14 home runs. So maybe Evans can get a hold of one here. Oh, six column. And that's a fly ball at the center. DeLone's there. And makes the catch for out number two. Hancock's back to second. So the boomer, George Scott, with a chance. He struck out tw twice against Renko. 0 for 3. Let's see if he can put the Red Sox ahead. And he lines out to Guerrero. So the Red Sox cannot take advantage of it once again. And it remains 4-4. We're going to let... We're going to let Torres throw another inning, or at least try. We really want to try to get him that that 15th uh, win here. The Cardis, 1-3 for three with a run scored. And he grounds it out to Hobson. 
Hobson takes on the second hop, fires to first for out number one. Revering up now, 0 for 2 of the run scored. Oh, just misses a single there. And hits a liner to Torres. Makes a catch, more like in defense. So Guerrero 0 for 3 on the day. Lines out to Remy, so Oakland goes 1, 2, 3 in the 8th, so we head to the ninth, Tied at 4. Can the Red Sox get a run here and give get Torres the victory? Now, as likely as Torres is the last inning. So Gross and Revering guarding the lines against Hobson. Hobson one for two with an inside the park homer. Also walked. Oh, he'll get see. Ooh, hopefully he'll get a good one to hit here. Ah, he gets the ground ball to short. Ugh. So Hobson is retired for out number one of the ninth. Burleson up now. He's got a couple pair of doubles on the day. Two for four. And he gets a one out single pass gross. Takes a wide turn but holds at first. Do we want to go with a hit run with one down? Ah. Uh. If we bunt, we give Rice a chance to put the red side. I think we're going to bunt even with one down here. Remy has a chance to beat it out, too. I think we're going to try a bunt. It's unconventional, but we're going to try it. I really want to get give uh, Torres a chance here. And Rice is our best hitter, although he struggled today. But we're going we're gonna to give him a shot here to redeem himself. Oh, no, no, not hit run. No, we don't want that. We're going to bunt. See if he, chance he can beat it. Oh, 92%. Here we go. We got to try this. All right. So, Burleson in scoring position with two down now. I, I, I was afraid that Remy was going to hit into the double play. Although, it's hard to double up Remy, but still. Wanted to make give us our best chance of getting Rice up. So, Rice up with two down and Burleson in Representing the go-ahead run. Can he come through? He struck out three times against Rinko. 0 for 4. See what he can do against Heverlo. And it's not going to be Heverlo. Who is it going to be? Oh, they're going to walk Rice. They don't even give him a chance. They take the bat out of his hands. Let's see if Fisk can make him pay. 0 for 3 with an RBI. Come on, Fisk. Ooh, we got a shot here. Yes, and Fisk is going to deliver with a base hit. And we're going to send Burleson home. 85% chance. They're going to cut off the throw. And they're going to allow the run to score. So Fisk comes through with a clutch RBI single. Making him pay. As, as Fisk was insulted by them. Walking Rice intentionally to get to him. And Fisk makes him pay though. So Torres with a, still with a chance here. To get his 15th victory at the Red Sox can hold on here. The Red Sox would love to add to this lead here. And they get the right man up. Who's a perfect 4 for 4 with 4 singles. Can he be a perfect 5 for 5? Come on, Hancock. Oh, I don't think he's going to get it here. but Oh, so he goes 4 for 5 as he grounds out to Heverlo. But the Red Sox do get the run. On the RBI single by Fisk and lead it five to four. And we get some final scores here. Let's check out the ones we're interested in. So Detroit ended up shutting out Milwaukee two nothing. So that's good news. Unfortunately, the Yankees crushed Seattle thirteen to five. So Red Sox cannot gain any ground on the Yankees, but they will get a game closer to second place as they're just one game behind the Brew Crew. So that's going to be it for, yeah, we can't, we can't let them, 129, we could. How many complete games that Torres has? Does it show on his card? Does not show on his card. 
Actually, we can find out, though. We can find out how many he's actually pitched. He's pitched one, two, three, four. He had three in a row. Wow. Four, five, six, seven. So he's pitched seven complete games already. Do we want to give him a shot here? Let's see what our see what his situation is for innings. I don't really want to go oh too much over his inning total. He's at ninety eight percent, so he could do it. I'm just worried, scared about our bullpen here. Let's see Drago. Drago is way overused. Stanley scares me. <laughs> Let's see what Stanley's done recently. See if he's pitched any better to give me any confidence in him. No. <laughs> he has not pitched well at all, so no. All right. We are going to have... What about Campbell? Campbell's a possibility. What do we got for batters here? We do have a lefty and two righties, but Campbell's not the greatest against the righties. We're going to let Torres try to finish it out. We have no faith. You know, Zimmer has no faith in the Red Sox bullpen, so he's going to let Torres, his best pitcher, try to finish it out here, even though he's over here. Here we go. It's a bottom third of the order, too. So Gross gets a, oh, he gets a pitch to hit here, though. Oh, but he grounds out, thankfully. Excellent. So Jim Essien won for three of the double. Torres looks in for the sign from Fisk, kicks and delivers. No, why are these all these guys getting their pitches to hit? But he pops it up, thankfully. <laughs> so A's down to the last out. Can Torres get the complete game in its 15th win of the season? Only thing that stands there is Mike Edwards. 0 for 3 on the day. And he draws the two out walks. So. <laughs> So, Delone up now. 0 for 4. And they're going to have Joe Wallace pinch hit. Wallace, 244 hit with 5 homers and 25 runs batted in. Stay away from that 2 column. Oh, he gets back safely. Oh, Lord, really? Come on, 8 roll. No! Ah, <laughs> you're kidding me. They're going to send the runner home. we got to try to get him out. Oh, come on. Come on. 16 through 20. Come on. Throw for the lead runner. Ah, oh, my God. So Torres cannot get the job done. I just didn't trust my bullpen. Can you blame me? Now Torres is going to come out dejected. He can't get his... Uh, we're going to let him stay in. Why not? Huh? You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, so I cannot believe that one. Oh, my goodness. So the Red Sox lose a heartbreaker here. I know a lot of people are going to second guess me on that one, but if you've been following through this whole thing, you know how bad our bullpen is. So, we had to take a chance with Torres, our best pitcher. Those rolls didn't make a difference anyway. Those rolls were going to happen anyway. So, none of those rolls ended up on the, on the, uh, fatigue things right here. As you can see by the fatigue, with that 11 right there, uh, and his five column. If it would have landed on those or any of the any ones with the up arrows here, then yeah, I could have. Uh, th then I probably should have. But man, <laughs> that's a heartbreaking loss there. So the Red Sox were down to the last out, and Oakland gets three straight hits. Who'd have thunk that one? It only had six hits on the whole day. So yeah, I'd rather have Torres lose it like that. Then have uh, Stanley come in, or you know, Drago was way over was way overused, and and uh, Campbell was not good against righties. So 
yeah. Anyway, ugh, a heartbreaker there. Snatch the, what do you call it? Something in victory, the jaws of victory. <laughs> or the agony of defeat or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Mike Torres with the loss. He's 14 and 5, so he was, he was due a loss to make it a little more accurate. Um, eight and two thirds innings, nine hit, only nine hits allowed, six runs, all of them earned, three walks and three strikeouts. Ugh. <laughs> Heartbreaker there. So Steve Rinko, seven and a third innings, seven hits, four runs, all of them earned, four walks, six strikeouts. Dave Hiverlow gets the win, relief, eight and one now, one and one third, two inning, two hits, one run, it was earned. One walk and no strikeouts. So, man. <laughs> that was a heartbreaker there. So, for the Athletics, Stallone 0 for 4. Jay Wallace 1 for 1. With a one run scored RBI. Alston 2 for 4 with a run scored RBI. Mitchell Page, 2 for 4, then RBI. Rico Cardi, 1 for 4, the run scored. Revering, 0 for 4, 0, uh, 0 for 3, with a run scored. Guerrero, 0 for 4. Gross, 2 for 4, with an RBI, and 2 runs scored. Jamesian, 1 for 4, with an RBI. And Edwards, 0 for 3, with a run scored. So, we're actually, I'm actually gonna give the player of the game to a one from the losing team. I'm going to give it to Gary Hancock was two, four for five with two RBIs. He, he would have easily been the, uh, player of the game for the Red Sox. Even if Torres would have been able to pull that one out or the Red Sox would have won with, you know, with Stanley or whoever we put in. But I'm still going to give it to Hancock who had four for five. So that's probably the only chance Hancock is ever going to get at a player of the game. So we'll give it to him here. Let's see what the computer picked here. Did they actually pick? No, they don't pick anybody. That's right. The only one person I think we can give it to was who was it that got the RBI? Was it Wayne Gross that got the uh, game winning RBI there? Let's check the. Uh, Check the play by play here. Mr. Brody over here. Oh, it's going to be Alston. Alston got the. Uh, let's see what Alston did for the day. Two for four. Yeah, Alston just doesn't have it. It's, it's a game winning RBI, but a big deal. I think Hancock still had a better game. Four for five. So here, Gary Hancock gets the player of the game in a losing effort. Definitely the Red Sox deserve better there. Red Sox fans, anyway. But they would blow games like this during the actual season, I'm sure. They did. <laughs> From uh, In fact, I can almost remember them those games <laughs> vividly with with Stanley or with uh Stan, mostly with Stanley even though he did have a great season but I just remember those games they seem to stick out or even Torres would blow the games like that too occasionally and he gets one here so that's realistic so with the loss the Red Sox fall to 71 and 50 three games behind the division leading New York Yankees let's take a look at that box score Not box score, sorry. Uh, let's take a look at the standings now. So, as you can see, how do they still tie? Oh, that's right. I forgot that uh, the New York and Milwaukee scores were uh, um, included. The, I had already played them, so they included this games for today. So, New York and Milwaukee 
with the New York win and the Milwaukee loss, that's what brought him into a tie. Okay, that all right. So they still have only played 120 games, and the Red Sox 121. So so that's good for the Red Sox, is they're just two and a half games behind and not three games behind. So Red Sox will, and see, as you can see, Oakland here is only 52 and 72. And they were 61 and 63, so they're still nine games behind their pace. So anyway, so let's check. Uh, let's check tomorrow's game here. So we'll fast play. I guess we'll see how the other teams do here. So Milwaukee wins four to two. And New York, oh, New York loses at Seattle 12 to 11, so that's good. Oh, excellent. So Milwaukee will be back in first place by a game. Let's see if the Red Sox can get a win and remain two and a half behind. Let's see, Manuel. So, tomorrow's game, Saturday, August 19th, which is my grandmother's birthday, August 19th, uh, 78. Let's check. It'll be Bill the Spaceman Lee, ooh, <laughs> against John Johnson, John Henry Johnson, I think it is. So, let's see what actually happened. You know, in reality, the Oakland Athletics won the game. So hopefully the Red Sox can. So the Red Sox currently now are. Uh, I think they're. How many games did they have? 70, 71 wins, right? Yeah. So they're currently six games behind their win total now. So it's. Still six games off the pace. That's going to be tough to make up all that with roughly 40-something games left. But it's possible, as they did play pretty horribly down the stretch. So we still have a chance we could do that. And it's actually Oakland Almeida County Coliseum, as it was officially called. So, all right, so we'll be back with game number 122. With Bill Lee going up against John Henry Johnson. So take care, God bless, and we'll see you in the next Red Sox 1978 replay using Stratomatic Baseball. Bye-bye now.